Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are going to be talking about how to make your kitchen look expensive. Okay, so first, right off the bat, really important to know, expensive is not a design style. Expensive does not mean that it reflects your personality. Expensive just means some ideas on how you can make your space feel a little bit more tailored, a little bit more custom, a little bit more designer, shall I say, and uh, just some ideas. You don't have to take them, just some ideas on making your space feel a little bit more premium and a little bit more beautiful. Now, again, I have a course, I have other videos, that are about finding your own personal style. So it's really important that you inject your own personal style in here. These are just some ideas on taking that personal style and maybe just making them a little bit more tailored, and a little bit more fun, and maybe even, yeah, a little bit more luxurious. That's what we're going for. So let's get going. Okay, so first tip I have for you on how to make your kitchen look expensive is to upgrade your faucet and your drawer pulls. So way back when I did a video, my first ever video on YouTube, how to make your room space feel expensive. I don't encourage that you look at that video because um, I'd like to think I've improved since then. It was a bit embarrassing. Thing, I'm not gonna lie. But in that video, one of the first tips that I had was to like upgrade some of your like hardware and your metals. And honestly, I still stand behind that tip all these years later because your faucet, you use it every day, okay? So this is something that you need to love. It is something that is beautiful, something that you really enjoy using, not some ratty old sort of chrome faucet where it's maybe peeling or maybe you've got some like white spots and you've maybe got some rust on there or whatever. Like that's not what this is about, right? If you can sub that out, it's a relatively inexpensive way to upgrade your space because there are so many more expensive pricier renovation type things that we're talking about in the kitchen because there's lots of fixed elements there. The faucet is a relatively easy thing to sub out. So if your faucet no longer feels like it's really serving you, if it maybe feels like it's a little dull, it's a little drab, or maybe it's, as I said, just quite frankly worn out, then I would consider really replacing it. And the same really goes for door hardware. I would consider your metals in your kitchen to be like the jewelry of your kitchen. It's just something that gives it a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of fun. It's an opportunity also to create cohesion in the space because by matching your metals Metals. You can go for a mixed metal look, of course, I have a video on that too. But if you are looking to sort of have that seamless sort of contemporary look where all of your metals are matching, then having your drawer pulls as well as your faucet matching together, or maybe even things like your soap pumps, maybe other metals that you have in your kitchen can really go a long way to sort of guide the eye around the kitchen and sort of make those connections between those different metals. So upgrade your faucet to make sure that it's no longer that dingy gross one and something that is serving you a lot better. It doesn't have to be super expensive. It doesn't have to have a ton of features, although you have ones that have taps and there's ones that have lights and there's all sorts of really crazy ones out there. It doesn't have to be super crazy. It just needs to be a beautiful faucet that is not rusty and gross and old and maybe something just a little bit nicer, a little bit more upgraded to what you're looking for and ideally thought through with some of the other metals that you have going on in your kitchen. That's really important. You're going for some intentional pieces where you can start to connect some of those metals around the kitchen so it starts to look really cohesive. That's really what I'm talking about. That's more important than how much money you necessarily spend on your faucet. Okay, next up, next tip I had for you is lighting. And there's two things I wanna talk about in respect to lighting. So, well, two and a half. This is kind of a third bonus tip. So first is going to be low hanging pendants that are over top of something like a kitchen island or even a peninsula are a really great way to really just all give you some task lighting that helps you sort of see what's going on in the space, but it also makes the room feel a lot taller, which is really nice. So when you have something that's really low hanging, not to the point you're bumping your head, of course, when you're trying to chop your vegetables, that's not okay. But if you've got something low hanging, it'll create the illusion that your space is much taller. And I know you're looking in the background going, well, why do you have pendants? Well, I also think it's really important that you have sort of a larger space to be able to accommodate lots of different types of pendants. So that is another thing I would consider is make sure that, you know, you don't have to put pendants in. If you have a smaller space, I would maybe skip it. But if you do have a larger kitchen, then it's really important, I think, to look at those pendants because having them quite low not only provides great lighting for you to actually do tasks in the kitchen, but it also can make a space feel a lot taller and more luxurious in that way, which I think is important. The other thing is under counter lighting or even under the toe kick uh, down below your cabinetry. These LED lights strips just provide like a nice subtle glow in the kitchen that looks really really luxe makes it look really beautiful really interesting I actually have it but I forgot to turn it on for this video oopsie maybe I'll go do that hold on one second see look at that doesn't it make my kitchen look a lot more expensive see look at that just made it look a little bit more premium so the this under counter light I usually forget to put that one on when I do videos and eh, whatever having that under counter lighting just really makes the space feel a little bit more luxurious you just got that subtle glow in the background it's another layer to your lighting so you're creating a more sophisticated lighting plan because now you're considering your accent lighting, your task lighting, your ambient lighting, you have all different types of lighting happening in the kitchen. I think it's a really great thing as well as the toe kick right down at the bottom or even inside drawers. That's really great too. So if you're in the middle of the night, you're maybe grabbing yourself a snack, no shame there. You can open it up and boom, you've got some lighting that's lighting up all of your cutlery and all your sort of different bowls and things like that, which I think is really, really nice. So I would consider putting it in the drawers if you can, but 
of a luxe look for sure. Definitely under the toe kick. And my first choice would be the under cabinet lighting because I really do think it goes a long way to make it look a lot more expensive. And the other tip I would have, if you have a larger kitchen and if you have a lot of space, consider other sort of freestanding lights as well. Something like a task lamp can be really nice, especially in a larger kitchen. Is it necessary? No. See a video that I did recently where I talked about de-influencing and how you don't need these giant lamps necessarily in your kitchen. But if you have a larger kitchen and you have the space for it, it is a nice way just to add another layer to your lighting plan in your kitchen. Something to consider. Not a must have by any stretch of the imagination, but large enough kitchen, it's pretty luxe, not gonna lie. Okay, next way to make your kitchen look expensive is going to be cabinets to the ceiling. So I talked about this in my kitchen design mistakes video, which is something that honestly, it's just worth considering. If you're doing a renovation and you know, the kitchen's tough sometimes because there's a lot of fixed elements there, which is why it can be really expensive to do a renovation, but oftentimes really worth it. I think it usually ranks quite highly on the list of spaces in your house to renovate, to improve the value of your home. And it's because the kitchen has so many fixed elements that over time, as it maybe starts to look a little bit more dated, it just goes a long way to upgrade that kitchen. So I would say that if you are looking at doing a renovation, considering taking your kitchen cabinets and bringing them right to the ceiling. So what it does is it's first of all, gonna be much easier to dust, right? So you don't have to worry about dust getting on the top of those cabinets, which is nice, huge bonus, as well as it makes your space feel a lot taller. It makes it feel a lot more luxurious to have one cabinet that is seamless right the way all the way to the ceiling, as opposed to cropped cabinets, which generally for me look a little bit more builder grade. They look, they're a lot cheaper because they just are. They're just kind of a standard box. They're not gonna necessarily feel really premium and tailored to the space. It's not gonna feel really built in. Instead, it's going to look cropped. It's gonna look like it's sort of floating in space, but it's not gonna have that connection right to the ceiling. It is going to also make your ceiling look a lot shorter. It's gonna make it look a little bit more stumpy. And so I would recommend if you can, and you're doing something like a renovation, go all the way to the ceiling. Now, if you're not doing a renovation, you have no plans on it, and you're like, but Nick, I still like this look. You can, if you are a DIY, or you could hire a contractor to do it as well, is you can just basically build a box and continue your cabinetry to the ceiling and just box them in. You can do that, paint your cabinets the same color, and you can create the illusion that your cabinets go right to the ceiling. Now, is it efficient space-wise? No, because you're basically creating a false box over top of that space to close it in. It's going to look more luxurious for sure, but it's not functional. I mean, you can, you can build drawers up there, but now you're basically redoing your cabinetry, so th that's a whole other thing. But if you just kind of want a bit more of a DIY-friendly solution, find ways to use MDF to basically enclose in those areas and uh, paint them the same color, and uh, if you're able to make that work, then that's another solution that gives you the illusion of boxes to the ceiling, which again is going to probably be custom millwork, but instead you can sort of create a look that sort of just kind of makes it enclosed. So it looks more premium from the outside, even if that drawer space isn't necessarily functional. But again, you save on the dusting, so that's good. Okay, so next on my list is going to be to consider adding color to make your kitchen look more expensive. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to add color. I do think that neutrals are beautiful. I think neutrals can be really important in design. You don't have to, you can have big, bold, colorful, crazy spaces if you want. But neutrals generally for most people are going to feel really calming and soothing and relaxing and they oftentimes really go together and they're very popular in contemporary design. But the reason I will say to consider adding color to make your kitchen look more expensive is automatically for me, when someone takes a risk and they put in color, it is going to look more designer and it's gonna look a little bit more beautiful than just always going for plain. And the reason for that is because, you know, gray, white, maybe black, but probably not. But let's be honest, gray, white, and maybe beige. Those are going to be colors that builders will use and it feels very stock and it feels very basic. And that's because builders obviously are not going to take huge risks. They're not gonna put probably blue or green or red or, you know, different colored, crazy, kooky sort of cabinetry in their spaces because they're going to try to appeal to a very wide audience. So using something like white cabinets or gray cabinets or something like that is going to feel really basic and it's going to feel really generic and that is therefore going to suit the maximum number of buyers because you know there's no one to offend with a white kitchen, right? Like no one gets really offended. No one's oftentimes really inspired by a gray kitchen, but no one's really ever completely turned off by one, let's be honest. But if you did something like some beautiful, really cool red wine cabinetry, that's really funky and some people are gonna love it and some people are gonna shy away from it because let's be honest, most people, that's not their first choice. So I would say that if you're doing something a little bit more custom, you're doing something that you're gonna live in for many, many years. This is maybe a home that you plan on living in for at least five years. You don't care about resale as much. You're looking for something that really reflects you, something that's more interesting to you, that you're really passionate about, that you really love, that reflects who you are and your family. Color can be a really great way to make a space feel really special, something that makes a space feel really uniquely your own because you're not doing the white, gray, beige, right? So you're not doing 
using those colors, you're doing something a little bit more interesting and a little bit more bold. And I think that makes the space feel a lot more interesting, feels like it's got a lot more personality, and therefore to me, feels a lot more expensive. Now, you don't have to do it with your cabinetry. Going for different types of stone can be really interesting. There's lots of really cool natural stones that come in lots of different colors. You can also really play around with backsplashes. You can do a really cool, funky, like vertical stack tile in green or something. That's really interesting and cool. And you can still balance these with neutrals, right? So if you really like a neutral space, but you just want little pops of color and you're feeling a little bit bold and brave, then I would say consider adding in some color, especially even in some of those fixed elements. Now, it's a bit of a risk because taking risks with fixed elements is always inherently going to be riskier than doing it with some decor pieces. But I would consider adding in some color here and there if you can in those fixed elements. Now, if you're not feeling so brave, but you still want some color, throw it in with some accents, you know, those lamps, those towels, maybe some of those appliances, things like that. You can start to get a little bit more creative with color without necessarily committing to those fixed elements because let's be honest, most people don't sub those out for maybe about 10, 15 years. They might do a renovation. That's gonna be a safer choice. But still, at the end of the day, Consider color because it really will make your space feel a lot more interesting and reflective of who you are and your own personality. Okay, next up is going to be paneled appliances. You all know how much I love paneled appliances. I can't not talk about paneled appliances every time I do a video, even remotely talking about kitchens. I love them. Now the Europeans, hi, hello, I don't forget about you. I love you, I see you in the audience. You're not the majority of the people that are here. I typically speak to an American Canadian audience, but hello Europeans, you always find this funny because you're like, paneled appliances, we've had those for years. Yes, of course you have, and they're beautiful and they're wonderful. But to the Americans and the Canadians in the audience, hi, uh, welcome. We oftentimes are a little bit slow to this game and really we shouldn't be. A lot of the European brands like Mila and whatever, they have been doing paneled appliances for decades. This is sort of the standard in Europe. Honestly, for me, I'll be honest, they're just better. I just like them more. Now they are more expensive. They're going to be more complicated because you're going to have to buy panel ready appliances. You're going to have the mill worker or your cabinet maker, whatever. You're going to have to make sure that you have ones that are going to fit onto your appliances. But at the end of the day, they are going to look beautiful. They will look integrated into the space. You will not have these big chunks of stainless necessarily all over your kitchen because for me, that is always going to look a little bit less expensive, a little bit less premium. I think that paneled appliances always make a space feel inherently really cohesive, looks really gorgeous. They always look really high end. I would panel anything if I could. Usually things that get paneled are dishwashers. Your fridge oftentimes is paneled. You usually can't panel a microwave and you can't panel a stove. But other than that, if you can panel it, I would. That just really always makes a space feel really expensive, really premium, and just a little bit more designer, I'm sorry. Now again, it is going to be a lot more expensive than just going with sort of your regular appliances that you would buy. There's nothing necessarily wrong with those, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about making your space look more expensive. So what do you want me to say? Get paneled appliances if you want your space to be a little bit more expensive, in my personal opinion. Okay, next up on my list is going to be to anchor your items. I talked about vignettes before in a previous video, talking about a space feel really expensive, and it just really works. And this is kind of the same idea of what we're talking about here in the kitchen. Find cutting boards trays, right? Things that you can have that really sort of make your space feel a little bit more put together by taking some of those things that tend to just sort of like bubble up in the kitchen all the time, right? Those little pieces that can just float in space on the countertop. If you can somehow bring those together in a nice beautiful tray and sort of corral them in one space, it's going to make your space feel a lot more intentional and it's going to feel a little bit like a little, just a little bit more put together than having everything so haphazard and spread around your space. So this is something I've been trying to do, finding areas of my kitchen where functionally I'm going to use the same piece over and over again. So your kitchen utensils, maybe your little squeezy bottles, maybe your butter dish, right? Maybe some of the things that you have frequently laid out on your countertop because functionally you use them every day and that's fine. Try to maybe put them in sort of some areas where you can kind of corral them around and maybe have like a nice tray or something like that on the bottom or a cutting board, something like that, to sort of contain some of those little weird pieces that can float around in space if we're not too careful in the kitchen. So corral it together, pick some beautiful pieces that really make sense to sort of anchor your space and then work from there and start to kind of add in so it doesn't feel inherently as cluttered as it would be if it just sort of floats around your kitchen. I hope that makes sense. Okay, next up, how to make your kitchen look expensive. This one is gonna be real quick. Just keep your place clean, clutter-free, as clutter-free as possible. I mention this in every expensive video and everyone's like, but why do you mention it? Because honestly, nothing will torpedo your kitchen quite like a cluttered hot mess 
mess. You can get the most gorgeous quartzite countertops that you can imagine. You can have walnut, solid wood walnut freaking cabinetry and it would be, oh, so amazing, beautiful. But then if your space is overloaded with dirty dishes and just so much clutter and you got the fruit flies rolling around the place, honest to God, it is not, it's not gonna save you. It's not gonna save you. No, no amount of beautiful countertops are gonna save you if you have a cluttered kitchen. So clean your kitchen, put stuff away. If you don't use it on a regular daily basis, I would consider, for me, this is what I do, is I would just go, do I have this every single day? If the answer is yes, then fine. Find a space, corral it, hide it, put it in, organize it, right? But if I don't use it every day, then put it in cabinets, put it away, put it away. Because then you just don't have to really worry about it. And it's just is gonna make that space feel a little bit more clutter-free. And honestly, you're gonna want to be in the kitchen a little bit more than you might think. Because there's nothing that makes me want to cook less than walking into a cluttered kitchen that is maybe even dirty. Do you know what I mean? Like no one wants to cook in a dirty kitchen. So I would put your stuff away that you don't use every day and neatly organize the stuff that you do. Okay, next up on my list is going to be consider things like an appliance garage or extra plugs in different things. Things, just little fun details that are very functional inside your cabinetry. So I gotta say, TikTok's horrible for society for a lot of reasons, but one thing that's really cool is seeing the weird, quirky, fun things that people do in their kitchen. Like things that they do with their little olive oil things or their little spice racks or those little integrated recycling or organic bins. I mean, how cool are those? Appliance garages, like these things are so cool. Just little innovative touches that honestly, if you're doing a renovation and you're thinking about it, these things can go a long way to make your space feel more expensive. They're usually functional in that they help you hide some of those things like we just talked about, those clutter things. So hiding them inside your cupboards, inside all your different cabinetry, under the sink, whatever, those things can make your space feel a lot more functional, but also more beautiful because you're able to actually hide some of those pieces that are maybe not super attractive, but also make it more functional because you actually enjoy using your kitchen. So you still have access to those appliances or you know the bins or the whatever, all that stuff. You still have access to it, but it's done in a way that is also beautiful and aesthetically pleasing as well. I love an appliance garage. If you don't know what it is, it's usually just one of those little garages that you tuck in, sort of your blender, maybe your toaster, those little tiny things that you don't necessarily use all day every day, but you might use once a day, maybe once every few days. You can kind of just tuck them away and then you just open the garage up when you need it. Maybe you slide it out. It's already plugged in, so you've already wired the electrical in there. And then you can use those little devices. And then when you're done with them, shove them away, close the drawer, and your space is beautiful again. I love these little touches. I'm seeing them all over TikTok and Instagram and things, and they're so much fun. I'm going to show some here, some of my favorites, and maybe you can get inspired for your own kitchen renovation. But honestly, these things can really make a space look more beautiful because you're hiding things, but also more functional too. And I think that's great. Okay. And then next up on my list, how to make your kitchen look more expensive. I would say explore Art. art in the kitchen is underutilized. It is something that people have never really done. It is a trend that I'm seeing more and more of, and I think it's really great because it's an opportunity for people to show more of their personality. Because here's the thing, we do that a lot in the living room. We may even do that a lot in the bedroom, but the kitchen is a space that feels very function first, as it should be, but also we tend to ignore that it is a space that we can still show our personality. We can still show things that are really interesting. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the farmhouse tea towel and being like, look at that, look, I'm interesting. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just really interesting art that reflects who you are and not necessarily just some stuff that you picked up on home goods, but like some interesting art that you really, really love. I think so often we preserve some of those decor pieces, myself included, for the living room or for other rooms in the house. And we sort of neglect the kitchen because it is so fixed element heavy. We tend just to kind of stick to the appliances and the functional tools that we're gonna need in the kitchen, as well as those fixed elements like the backsplash, the kitchen countertops, and the cabinetry and things like that. But we forget that there is an opportunity to add in decor, an opportunity to add in art. You know, that tray that we talked about where you can corral all those items, that's an opportunity not just to go with something functional, but to go with something beautiful too, and something that maybe reflects who you are. There's some really cool things that are out there that you can sort of play around with. So, you know, if you've got some, you know, repurpose from other areas of your home, if you're like, you know, I've got some extra decor that's maybe kicking around the living room, and maybe I've got too much of it, think of how you can incorporate that into the kitchen because the kitchen is still an opportunity to show your personality rather than just going always for the sort of functional pieces that you could actually need for cooking. So consider that too. It goes a long way to just show some personality. And I think that's one of the keys that makes your kitchen look more expensive personally to me. So thanks you all. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'm going to link here on how to make your living room look more expensive. I think if you liked this kitchen video, you'll like that one too. Go check it out. I will see you all in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.